Oh yes! So, before we get started guys, I just want to share something really special with you. With the release of World of Warcraft Battle of Azeroth, uh, the channel spiked and we passed 100k so fast. And I was just like so happy. Because there was a time that I was just thinking of letting YouTube go. And so I made a black version, like an onyx black version of the play button to kind of like celebrate the YouTube thing because I was planning to just let it go. Thankfully I didn't and here we are today, uh, over 100k and it's just being a blast. So thank you guys, I'm so excited for this. I am gonna make a special video explaining the situation with this guy when the silver award from Google comes in. And I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to that. So with that out of the way, today we are working with a sequel as is a very classic thing in movies. Uh, you make something good and then you make a sequel and everyone is like, ah, oh, it's never gonna catch up to the first video. But in this case, I'm really pumped because you guys were so awesome in the comment section of the last video, Battle of Azeroth, and you just explained it, everything to me, and you gave me so much awesome storylines and things. And so you said, you have to react to this guy, the Shadowlands, and I also apparently missed Old Soldier when he came to the Battle of Azeroth. So we're gonna react to all three of those. And from what I can tell from the wallpaper that I found, things are gonna go down. So super pumped guys, if you're new here, Filmmaker React episodes come out every week. In part one, we react to them. And in part two, we dive in to have an awesome discussion about cool filmmaking techniques that were used, as well as some visual effects that we can pull from them and do in real life using After Effects. I'm a freelance filmmaker when it comes to my job. I have a ton of tutorials, guys, and this kind of series is an awesome way to interact with you look at amazing, awesome things and just have a blast. Now, today's video is brought to you guys by the Reed Wallet. It's an awesome alternative to the classic kind of wallet that is leather. And if you want something that looks industrial, is made from extremely high quality materials and it's a minimal way to have your wallet, your cards and your cash in your pocket, the Reed Wallet is the way to go. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There are over 30 colors and styles to choose from. I personally love the Forged Carbon Edition as well as the Burnt Titanium. I've never seen one of those. I really do get why there are over 30,000 reviews that are five stars. It's made of, of durable materials and it comes with lifetime warranty, which is it's sick. And you can buy one wallet today and carry it for life. Another cool thing about this is that they make for great gifts. You can give one to your best friend and say thank you for being awesome or you can go over to your dad and be like hey dad this is for you welcome to the cool kids club because that would be awesome you can use my discount code guys in the description to get 10 percent off it's free worldwide sipping and it's just really cool so i highly suggest you guys take a look at i'll have them in the description and with that said we're ready to jump over to YouTube and get starting with the awesome cinematic trailers. Dude, because I can't wait anymore. Full screen and one, two, three, go. <sighs> Suggestive themes. Interesting. of Lordaeron whispered the name Arthas. What? That is epic. Oh, it's a lake. That is sick. It kind of looks like a White Walker version of Sauron. I 
watched with pride as you grew into a weapon of righteousness. Okay. Here we go. Remember, our line has always ruled with wisdom and strength. And I know you will show restraint when exercising your great power. power. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. It's a dragon. No. no? <laughs> Man. I really doubt that, you know Game of Thrones, like they had the White Walkers and then the dragon on w the latest seasons, like one of them died and he became like the blue breathing, like undead kind of like dragon. It's like they took the design almost like from this one. That was sick. Okay. So let's move on to old soldier now. Yeah, that was sick. I really love the way that they did like the lake. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'll shut up. I'll leave it for the dissection part. Okay. Let's old soldier. So this one comes before the other ones that we watched in episode one. Okay. Okay. That was cool. Oh, he's the guy that ran in the end to try to stop him. And the guy that got the sword hit. What do you think? Oh, it is before the fight. Okay. Oh. I know you. There I know is you. No honor with this. They will come for us now. All of them. What? My father, Hikazi. He fought with you in the third war. He sounds a bit Italian. Like accent -wise. stories. The actor. Oh, you could cut down ten enemies with a single blow. This be my first battle. Oh. <laughs> what should I do? Oh. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> Don't yes, die, boy. Of course, but if I do fall, may it be with honor in glorious crime. <laughs> There will be no glory today. Oh, they know they're gonna lose. Only pain. Uh. Oh. 
bawah. You have earned your warrior's death, my son. Yet once again, I am denied it. by himself I mean I know how this ends so that makes things more tragic a bit on edge for good reason boy like you it begins oh that oh it saved it. Live another day. Oh. Oh, and then it begins. Without honor. good that was sick you guys were spot on yeah okay so then the battle begins and that's why and in the end I mean I'm sure all of you guys have seen the trailer so it's not like I'm gonna spoil you things but sick okay final one Shadowlands why is my volume so low was the volume on the first one there as well no it was full cool so let's see the final one and then we'll drop in the discussion part These are so good, man. Well done, Blizzard. Okay, we have snow again. Ice crown. I know you. A monument to our suffering. Our bad elf chick, who's hot. I mean, the veil between yeah. life and death. What is she doing, man? Where oh, oh, this is this is building up good. Throne. Nice. But no king rules forever. Where's the guy? 
is the ice guy. Who's now fire. Sauron, again. Mordor. He, he leveled up. He does both? He does both. Whoa. Let's go. Whoa. Hello, sexy again. She's undead, though, so, yeah. No one's perfect, but... Whoa. Where's the dragon? Oh, yes! Sound design, man. Ooh. Oh, that was sick. Yeah, I think she's good. No way. No way. What? Mountain on me. She's got you, man. She's not. She's not like even like. Because she was brought back from the dead. Oh, oh, oh sh oh, she's not. She's gonna break it? No! Underworld parallel? Upside down? What? Mate! I'm sorry. I love the first one, the king thing. I really like the old soldier for context, but what on F was this? That was sick! Man! She's badass, man. Did you like... Oh, don't tell me. Like, did you like kick her ass in the game? God damn it, man. That was so sick, though. Best in class. Especially, man, from the... From the cinematic techniques that they've used for this one, the last one, and the quality. I mean, I know from what I've seen, like, Wrath of the King, it was like 2010. Like, that is ages, eons ago on tech years and like 2018, fair game, fair game, 
amazing, man. Let's dive right into them, guys, and talk about film stuff, because this was sick. Logo. Let's see how the... Nice. My son. So I love how they open it up with a kind of like centered frame of the throne and how he is iced and then the narration which is not directed to us or it's directed to us maybe on like an indirect way if that makes any sense because the guy is talking to this lovely gentleman here and he wakes up and stuff. Artistically wise it's amazing the color scheme that they use. We've talked about past episodes about contrasting color. What is really amazing here is that they don't actually do that. Everything has this blue hue, but they played with the eyes to have a very, a much more vibrant hue to it, like a cyan, and then the rest of it is blue, but the clouds and the air is like desaturated. So they play with that contrast of in the same kind of like color space, blue, cyan, etc. They play with the vi vibrance of it of that color. So cyan, teal is more vibrant when it comes to the eyes and then as we're gonna see the blue of the visual effects with the particles and things like that. And then the rest of it, the ice, the snow, which is white, is desaturated. The day you were born, the, the music kind of builds the up. On whispered the name. Arthas. Arthas. Really cool. I love eye effects, so I'm not gonna go into them again. You guys know this about me by now. I would really love to do this because you basically do a glow effect and then you would use particles uh, to render them out and kind of like compose them on top of the eyes. Really cool. I love how they bring in the title and they have the snow particles going through and then it cuts to this one. Man, how pretty is this? Again, uh, contrast of color, we also have contrast of light. Look how this section is where the light comes from. The center of the frame is in between, and then the edge is darkness. Really cool composition. I am such a huge fan of vocal kind of like soundtracks, where they use the voice of an amazing kind of like female artist, because I just love this kind of like vocalization of a soundtrack. I tried to do the same, uh, for example, what was it? It was mostly used, again, in Card of War, Rise of the Sun, in the opening scene, where we established the space and the fantasy land, and I used vocal music, again, to kind of like enroll the audience in a fantasy-based world. So, really freaking awesome. So cool. How cool, man. I love how they kind of like go faster in terms of timing by fading in and fading out. So that gives the audience the expectation that it's not the time does not flow naturally. You know, it, we didn't cut from the other scene to this one. It kind of like progresses. So that in combination with the music, we get a very nice and cinematic feel. And of course, using a drone shot. This is a game, yes, but they use the same techniques and in film. Um, using the drone shot to kind of like establish where the character walks towards to by keeping the character as he walks the center of attention is really cool. And I love the detail of the eyes just flowing off. Keep note how he did this to the eyes to kind of like reveal the lake and again how like the, the teal color comes through. This is important because in the next scene... Sick. Again, contrast of color and light, light, darkness, teal, vi vibrance versus hue blue, very desaturated. Sick. So beautiful, man. You have the sword. It's always cool when you have something very important to cut to a close-up of it. Let's say it's the eyes opening. Let's say it's a weapon. Let's say it's a scar. When a, a character takes a pivotal decision within the story, you would cut to a telephoto framing, which is the face, and kind of have their expression give the viewer what's happening. Super cool. I love this. And, oh, 
man, that is just like top notch stuff. K pay attention, guys. Look at the particles in the snow, right? So, look how fast they were moving. As opposed to when the sword comes up, everything kind of becomes slow motion, like the particles and the air around it kind of like stops and it was like, and then the sword comes up and it comes like, because take a look at the particles. See? Now we can see it's particles and they move so slowly, that is so sick. And I love the composition of rule of thirds. We have the focus on the character in one third, then we branch out and the other third is the sword kind of like just goes through. That's sick. That's what I meant. Do you see how they kept the details of continuity when he wiped up out the snow? The wiped part is still there. That is really tricky because usually in actual productions, you have a job and their job would be continuity. How the character stopped in the uh, scene before. If he moved a glass, where the glass moved before. And of course, this is CGI, but it's just really cool to keep in mind that, you know, it takes a lot of work and for something as small as this. But Remember. And I love the overhead shot, because even they made the particles who swear all around the character. Oh, See how it goes like this? With wisdom Sick. Oh, what did I do? Has always ruled with wisdom and strength. Here we go. Did you see how the snow particles? Oh, that is so sacred, man. Like how, how the snow touches the blade and the blade kind of like becomes epic. You can definitely do this within After Effects. You just have to work a lot with glow effects, kind of like the spread out effect and then use glow and vibrance values to make it glowy blue and things like that and it's just animation but you can do it because it is technically a 2d effect if you do it right Exercising your great nice. power. Sick. man another scene this ho, ho, ho. how sick is that And then from the back, uh, it's the same. I love how cool, like, you know, the character, like, gazes in the distance. Whether it's an explosion or a cool undead dragon rising behind you, you're just gazing in the most cool way possible. Sick. And again, one third the character, and in the background, starting from this side, we can see what's happening. Sick. And it just teases just a bit. They show you enough to get you, is it a dragon? Is it this? And then the cut to build up. Sick. The thing about things that are massive, whether it is an explosion or things like that, when something is so big, you actually need to make things move slowly. Because if you see how much time it takes for the snow and the things to kind of like fall off. It's because of the sheer size of the thing. It's kind of like the energy, the fire, sick. Nice. You would need 3D uh, animators, simulators, particles, all kind of things to pull this off. Sick though, sick. So they show us the horde of the undead, basically. Sick. I tell you this. Sick. My days have come to an end. Okay, uh, focus how we transition from an over-the-shoulder kind of view, how the guy looks over the troops and stuff, and then the camera does this super cool cinematic move, but we don't say, stay in the same perspective because now, together with him, we look down on the troops together so we feel empowered, but as we switch around to basically look at the character himself, us, the viewer, get shifted to look him up as well, to showcase the strength, the power, the dominance. Tell you this, for when the okay. days have come to an end. Now this, this is an extreme low, like this is telling us, I'm kick ass mate, do not mess with me. You 
shall be king. Sick. Freaking sick. Uh, when it comes to the old soldier, I love the way that they tell the story. Here we go. Sick. Let's talk a bit about flashbacks, because this is what they do here. So we have a very tragic scene where we could see a soldier holding an unfortunately dead one, and then it cuts to flashbacks. The way you do flashbacks is actually you need to make them very violent, kind of like to establish the violence within them. Because when you have a tragic scene and you get show a flashback, is either usually to show a happy memory and make the tragedy even more impactful, or show very in very small glimpses what happened when it's the latter one it's more of a violent kind of like that violence that led to this you have to cut in a violent way so they use flashes here to take you back but sound design as well is very violent and it just kicks you builds up sick I love how they bring in the titles with that like really sad piano tone. They did really good. So we're up before the battle starts again. Beautiful colors. We have the warmth and kind of like the bluish purplish hue because the sunset comes up. And here they work a lot with just letting the expression of the actor that did the animation tell us a lot about the character, how he's broken, how he's saddened, and he just like, doesn't have much, you know, to live for. Then we have the other one. That was really cool, actually. It's really funny because you can see the haze, how detail-oriented they are when they put the haze in fire. I love using distortion heat waves to like, com when composing effects because I really do think that it makes a huge difference when it comes to the final result because distortion whether it is a magic spell whether it is some cool like flash transition and transportation of a character really does take it to the next level when you use heat maps in After Effects now this is CGI of course but in general it's funny how many things just like work across the board so that's pretty cool so we have the fire coming up. They look How over. Many? What do you think? Too many. Too many. Sick. Damn. She really burned everyone, didn't she? That is cool. There is no honor in this. I love them. Sick. So we have the flashbacks. To kind of give us like you know this is why this fight battle is gonna go down because of what she did and then it comes up really cool Kazi. he fought with you in the third war mm -hmm. now, again the close-up of him taking the helmet off uh, in kind of like signifying the importance of the act by having a close-up to kind of like gaze our attention to it Again, yeah, rule of thirds, how to position the characters. You guys are experts by now. This be my first battle. Oh. Do die. Then do die. Yes, it's simple. No. <laughs> and no glory today. So we get a lot of story elements by having a cool conversation scene between the characters. And from the tone of voice, the script, we get a lot of like story and character elements. Really cool lighting with the fire and the tremble. That's the thing about fire. If you try to simulate the light of a fire and you have an LED, it's not really going to work because you need the fire trembling effect when it comes to light. I was so taken out from... Oh, what was it? Was it the movie or was it the show? There was an episode of some sort that was like medieval, you know? And in the tent scene where they were talking about like the war strategy and stuff, I... There were like these little candles in the background, but they were like, like the electric ones. So the fire of the candle would not flicker. And I was like so taken out of the scene because I'm like, are you guys using electric candles in the background? Like that is like, no. 
So if you see in this flashback how softer the transition was, they still use the white light because when it comes to memories, we've associated the visual interpretation of a memory to be white, where if it's black and it fades to black, it signifies that something ended. So putting the white one, it signifies the memory, but in this case, where is a tragic scene when it comes to a flashback and not like the violence that occurred, the transition is way softer, but also the sound is way softer as well. We don't have that really big impactful sound when it came to the other violent flashbacks. The music comes up as well to give us the context. Really cool scene. I love this composition as well. And I really love how they have the light illuminating them from the back and then being in shadow because it's like a death scene. Because for example, imagine if I put this light to illuminate me from the back, right? Like how more dramatic and kind of like dark the thing would look versus me having it facing one side. But again, I play with contrast. So one side is lit up, the other one's kind of dark. And then we have the cool edge light illuminating from the back and giving the contrast of color and the contrast of light again. Really cool. So, the flashback ends. Doing. Claiming what is mine. Nice. I actually think, if I may say, they did the flashback transition of the Cyberpunk trailer a lot better because they used the transition of the exact same composition, which was the bloody hand in the faucet and then the hand being cleaned up, where here they could have used the pendant to have the same kind of composition as he either takes it in the hand or walks away with him having it over the fire and having the same framing composition of an element between the two flashbacks, between the flashbacks in real time is a really cool way to do like flashback transitions. Just something that I remembered from the other one. So he moves on. How pretty, man. We have the warmth again from the fire and the purplish bluish tone to play with the colors and stuff. I love how vibrant these trailers are. And I love this thing, how a soul soldier against the army kind of reminds me, do you remember how Captain America was like super bashed up and like super cool and he like stood around to like kind of look at Thanos' like army by himself? Ah, it's really cool. It's really like epic and the framing is like spot on here. Look how like he's centered with a center kind of like tower and himself being in the center and we're just gazing from the back as we watch him go away. So that's cool. So then the little guy is gonna try to catch up. He's like, I I said, go back. <laughs> Live another day. That's He's really dead. Cool. You know me. Again, look how like we look down down up to him to get like intimidated. <laughs> Where we like we look up as the character looks up. Oh give up, boy. There. Thank you. And then we look down over the shoulder where we are from his perspective and where we are from the little guy's perspective, we look up to them. Yeah. Then the banners go up, the siren goes up, the sunrise has happened and the fight is gonna start with everyone, so he's not gonna go by himself. And the little guy just gave him that memory, you know, that remembering that, you know, some things are still matter to hold on to. Super cool. Like honor. Okay. Really cool. And then them standing off and then the fight begins and then the cool raw ball cry. Without honor. Music build up. Sick. Ball cry. Sick. I really want to take another look in the Shadowlands trailer because it just was so sick. Logo, very gradual fade, kind of like floor level, revealing the castle of ice. Ice crown. Narration of our gal. A monument to our suffering. I all I love 
character reveals like I think how you reveal a character can really impact the audience and I love when like for example here the transition from like looking at the castle down on like the road level seeing a few characters a few elements and then the leg boot usually of the character just like steps in frame that is sick really cool stuff I love that detail and I like how they don't show her because when you watch it first time you're like and you hear the voice you're like is it her so that's sick the veil between life and here, I mean, the voice actors, man, she did such a good job. Um, it's really funny because here, we, it's as if we are kind of like looking from like a high point, you know, like how you have like someone on a rail and kind of like looking someone like how it is in like Assassin's Creed when you're like on the rooftops and you're following someone. This is kind of like similar, like we're following along as if we're uh, someone there. And we haven't seen her face yet. We're just like following her along as she climbs and stuff. We could be behind her as if we're actually following her and we're with her. But now we're a bit further away still. And we haven't really checked her out yet. I love surfers? the overhead shot again. Like walking towards the light. Everything is basically black. On a frozen and I love the transition they do here with the castle part and how it fades into black and that's how they're gonna cut to the next shot. That is like top-notch stuff. When you can cut like this, it's like no sick. And now we have a sunset to reflect on the side and then we have the cold, more dark area here and we can see everything and it's sick. I don't know if he was part of the story and they explained why at the beginning he was only blue but now he has fire and ice kind of like thing. So he gets up, things are building up, you can hear the bass on the back, the close up of the ice changing. Sick. And now we see the face, she kind of smirks. And on goes. And the title drops. How cool is that? And I like how they like did not show the meaningless fight between the minions and the cut after that is done to show like the boss fight scene. We'll see. Oh. I love how more dynamic the camera is now. Uh, we've talked about this in the past, especially in the Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer. How when nothing crazy is happening you have come of like a fl flowing flying through space camera movement whether it is when it comes to the fight scene the camera tends to lean towards the momentum of the frame itself so if a weapon goes like this the camera will follow to enhance the dynamic of what is happening in the frame That is so cool, man. I love orb effects. We kind of have to take a look at how to do the Dragon Ball Z kind of like energy orb effect. There is a tutorial on it. And with the creative store assets, it's not that hard to pull off. But I always love it because it's just like so cool. And it rocks and stuff. It's like... <laughs> Sick. <laughs> I always like when the character just does this. And like so easy to miss, but then when she shoots the arrow, the way. Sick. Oh! You know how they showed where the arrow landed on the rock? It's because they're gonna use it after, when she summons the chains, one of them is gonna come from the back and it's gonna pull it and get the rock. That is really cool, I did not notice this on first viewing. Nice. That is so sick. Like it's the mist of snow and stuff. So really cool thing to notice here. Up until now we had a kind of like balance between natural sound effects of like the weapons, the snow, the arrows, but a soundtrack was playing on the back as well. Here they do this trick where they mute the soundtrack and they just leave the natural sounds that occur, whether it is the the in the hymn kind of like of the wind, or it's the weapons, or it's the snow, the particles, all of those sounds 
play a large role, but the soundtrack dies out. There are two ways to do this. Uh, in a scene like this, where it's the battle, it's a cool way to kind of like spice things up and cut the soundtrack and just have the sound playing. Where in other occasions, for example, let's say there is a dramatic character death scene, you can do the opposite. You will mute the natural sounds and you will amplify the soundtrack. For example, you know a character dies and you have the scream, but we can't actually hear the scream, but we can see the emotion of the face and the soundtrack just like ramps up. That is a cool way to do this, but here, because it's a fight scene, and we kind of like midway, they cut off the soundtrack, the sound design is like spot on, and then they're gonna bring it back. See, the wind, the snow, the weapon. You have a small riser ramping up. <laughs> In the face. Sick. That is so cool. And now the chains are gonna come. Oh man, that is so sick. I would never expect that. That is a sick. See, that's the arrow. Yeah, and she's gonna bring it all down. So cool, man. It's chained down. Now the perspective changes slightly. Now we always kind of like look down on him and we can just a slight angle of looking at her. That is the sick, the particles. You would need to, man. I, I really doubt you can do this with like pre render particles. You would need to have a particle designer make these things on a per scene basis in order to make it look as good as this. Rule of thirds again. You are unfit to wear this crown. Ugh. What is he by the way? Like why is he like half and half? Oh sick. So cool. Weird. So... Again, I think it's really interesting they chose to illuminate her from the back and not from the front and just have the light coming from the back and her face is technically in shadow so it's not as illuminating. Let's say again like the light straight in my face kind of like illuminating things. Where, if you remember, actually, we take we took a look at the Battle of Azeroth when the main guy with the cool sword, ah, oh, I forgot his name, you guys told me, summons the cool light from the sky and kind of like puts on the defense. His face was all lit, man. It was all light in the face, you know, cool stuff. This seems this so cool. Is a prison. I love how her voice has this subtle reverb in it like it sounds like it's almost from another realm you know what i mean like it's not like a regular person's voice which makes sense because he's dead hmm. that is so cool center frame now the eyes man See, that is kind of, you know, they're toying with us because you're like, she's going to wear it, right? To get the power or something. But no, this chick is going to like split in half, man. Sick. I can, man. This scene is spectacular. Someone, please explain this to me. I don't get it. Why is she so powerful? Like, I get it. She was an elf, she died, she was brought back. How is she so powerful, man? Let me know. That imagery, man. The parallax. That is like... Will set us all free. free. That is like a painting, man. That is sick. Damn, Blizzard, man, what a talented team. 
them and any other kind of like external partner they got together to make these things man sick 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 i freaking love them oh someone's calling me give me a sec Ugh. hey bro i'm recording a video right now and you're on camera so can i call you in a bit hey nice thanks yeah yeah <laughs> call you soon bro you always see these things happen on YouTube, and now they happen here. So, cool. Anyways, guys, uh, what I wanted to say is thank you so much for like grinding me in the comment section to watch World of Warcraft uh, cinematics. They've been so freaking sick. I love them. Easily, easily top five trailers we've seen so far, and I can't wait. Now, let me guys know. You told me Overwatch. You told me StarCraft. You told me some League of Legends, I think. Let me know in the comment section below. I'll pin a comment and just like, I don't know, write someone, write uh, Overwatch, for example, and let's get the likes and whichever gets the more, more likes between the three, I'll do that. We have so many trails to react to and kind of like dissect. So I'm like super pumped about it. And that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button, guys. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Until then... Stay awesome and creative.